Energieblijf volgens president Santoki een strategische prioriteit voor alle CARICOM-landen. Het Surinaamse staatshoofd sprak op dinsdag 29 november bij de opening van het driedaagse Regional en Suriname Renewable Energy Forum in zijn hoedanigheid van CARICOM-voorzitter. Hij acht het van belang dat CARICOM-lidstaten doorgaan met het optimaliseren van hun potentiële hernieuwbare energiebronnen. Zij zullen ook het aandeel van hernieuwbare energie in hun energieaanbod moeten vergroten. This first forum is aimed at strengthening the commitment of Suriname and the region as a whole to integrate renewable energy as part of its energy matrix now in the f- and in the future and to promote and coordinate a more intensified use of renewable energy and energy efficiency technologies and models. This event is also part of the CARICOM Energy Month. In the CARICOM region, November is e-marked uh, as Energy Month in order to increase awareness on energy consumption and to encourage energy saving actions. The initiators of this event want to make sure that as much as possible relevant stakeholders are involved in the efforts to promote the use of renewable energy en energy efficiency technologies and models in the region as part of the electrification planning. For this purpose, a number of these stakeholders have been approached to take part in the organizing of this event as partners. Government ministries and agencies as well as private business, uh, NGOs and professionals active in the energy sector are key in assuring the success of a coordinated effort to intensify the use of renewable resources for the purpose of electricity generation and distribution. The Regional and Suriname Renewable Energy Forum should be a meeting place and platform for all those active and involved in the energy sector for networking and synergy opportunities. The agenda of this event is designed in a way to extract information and insight which is not readily readily available from other sources or online. Also, this event will consist of interactive sessions designed to draw out and explore opportunities for investment and development region and uh, regionally and nationwide. In the past months and years, there has been great, a great deal of focus on the developments offshore of Guyana and Suriname regarding oil and gas. Of course, we must be aware that this will still play an important role in our energy transition in the foreseeable foreseeable future. But at the same time, we must also be aware that Suriname, just like the rest of the region, has an abundance of natural resources that can be used as renewable energy resources such as sun, wind and hydro. These resources have taken, however, a backseat to the developments of hydrocarbons, while a lot of the region is dependent on oil and gas. At the recent COP27, the commitment was again made to push for a more intensified integration of renewable energy resources in our energy mix. Also, Suriname has committed itself to this, as indicated on several occasions, by the government. Therefore, the focus regarding our energy policy must not solely rest on the use of hydrocarbons for our energy future, but must at the same time also be focused to promote and further integrate a gradual use of renewable energy resources alongside the hydrocarbons and ultimately phasing out hydrocarbons. To keep the out to keep the output high collaborations between public and business community with a reoccurring character and specific themes will be further developed to achieve targeted goals in the interest of the energy sector in Suriname and thus achieve results in the medium and long term to get long term together the purpose of this forum is as well to have a conversation between public and private initiatives and to align these initiatives regarding renewable energy resources. Wishing you all a fruitful and above all informative 
and interactive conference. The reason why I'm saying that it's a historical moment for us is because the way we planned this activity, it was the public sector and the private sector telling each other that we need to cooperate, that we need to work together, that it is not just a one-man show. Both sides, the public sector and the private sector, need each other in order to bring the development. I will not uh, go into the details. I think that they've said enough about the purpose of uh, this uh, event. But there are a few things that we want to achieve during this event. And one of the things is when we talk about transition from oil and gas towards renewable energy, that means that we have to have a clear vision. We need to have also the structures in place that can assure us to reach our goals. Out of this conference, one of the things, and I'm always, always looking at the, at the financial sector, is that one of the things that we see from the private sector is that we need the financial input for the private sector in order to be able to be a part of that transition. We have estimated with research that it's possible to put around 40 to 50 megawatt of, of solar energy spread around the EPAR network. It won't happen if we don't have a clear vision. It won't happen if we don't have a clear plan. It won't happen if we don't have the finance available. It won't happen if we don't increase the capacity of the private sector to be sure that we are not just subcontractors, because that is one of the things that we really want to deal with. We don't want Surinamese company just to be subcontractors. We want Surinamese, Surinamese companies to reach the level that they can be active participants, that they can be uh, contractors in some of the big projects that will happen. What we want is all inclusiveness. And I'm gonna end with this uh, note that we always say, and that is something that we say, one is too small to be great. The public sector needs the private sector, and the private sector needs the public sector. This is the energy that we want to breathe out. This is the kind of collaboration that we had aimed to achieve at this conference. I welcome you, and I hope that by the end of this conference, we are both satisfied with the results that we will achieve in Suriname and over the Caribbean. As chairman of the Conference of Heads of, of Governments of CARICOM, I am pleased to address you at the concluding event of the CARICOM Energy Month 2022. The regional and the Suriname Renewable Energy Forum in Paramaribo to discuss our sustainable energy future. The main objective of this forum is to strengthen the commitments of Suriname and the region to integrate renewable energy as part of its energy matrix. This event will sure contribute a great deal to promoting a more intensive use of technologies and models for renewable energy and energy efficiency as part of a joint public-private effort. The Caribbean Community CARICOM has committed itself to addressing the four aspects of energy security and ensuring that energy-related services are available, reliable, affordable, and sustainable for its citizens. These four aspects of energy security are as important to Suriname as they are to the whole region moving forward. Energy, ladies and gentlemen, remains a strategic priority for all CARICOM countries as the region confronts unprecedented challenges in a worsening climate, ongoing international political tensions, and 
declining economies. The region is in the grip of a volatile global oil prices which reached record highs this year. It is therefore a priority to decouple the regions and economies for imported fossil fuels that provide more than 80% of the region's energy needs. Suriname is fortunate to stand out as we are energy independent regarding our power generation and this with 50% renewables for an important part of the hydropower that we are able to realize this. In this new post-COVID world, there is an unmatched <coughs> eagerness in the Caribbean to push forward with the energy transition. While, however, opportunities abound and investors are waiting in the wings, the lack of a framework and cooperation is slowing down our progress. The significant increase and the pace of investment required across the region necessitates unprecedented participation of the private sector. The need for enabling regulatory frameworks has become even more urgent if we are to achieve our regional and national sustainable energy targets. It is evident that capital remains abundant as, frankly, our projects opportunities. However, the need for regulation and coordination of the effort is as well, if not the most important action to be taken at this moment. As the incumbent CARICOM chairman, I'm aware of my responsibility to prioritize the CARICOM energy agenda. For that reason, during the recent G20 Bali summit, CARICOM presented the regional policy position that it will optimize indigenous natural energy resources. This stimulates the region's sustainable development with a well-considered mix of traditional and renewable energy sources. As a region, we are not immune to international economic and political developments. The geopolitics of energy affecting supply and demand undermine a post-pandemic economic recovery. It creates more poverty worldwide through rising commodity prices, rising inflation, and higher supply chain costs, exacerbated by the high level of debt in many member states. The region is committed to the transformation to carbon-free economies. However, the financing of the energy transition remains a crucial point for the member states. There is a need for innovative financing mechanisms that are appropriate, affordable, and accessible for small energy markets in the CARICOM, such as the Caribbean Resilient Fund. Therefore, it is important that CARICOM member states, and of course Suriname, need to keep on optimizing their potential for renew renewable energy sources and increase the proportion of renewable energy in their energy makers. The month November since 2013 has been earmarked in the CARICOM member states as CARICOM Energy Month. The activities of CARICOM Energy Month are focused on the engagement of decision makers from the public sector and industry together with academics and other civil society actors. This is a moment where we as collectivity can reflect on where we stand regarding our renewable energy-based policies individually and as a region. It is also the right moment to increase awareness of energy consumption and to encourage energy saving actions. The theme for this year's CARICOM Energy Month 2022 is Our Future is Electric. Considering the goals of the Energy Month in CARICOM and especially this year's theme, I applaud the joint local public-private 
and regional initiative of the Energy Authority of Suriname, the Suriname Energy Chamber, and the Caribbean Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency. They organized the first regional and Suriname Renewable Energy Forum as a way not only to commemorate the Energy Month, but more importantly, to be a call to action. Achieving the targets laid out in the CARICOM energy policy requires accelerated action to deploy clean energy in the member states. This conference will convene CARICOM and Suriname energy stakeholders to identify feasible opportunities, pathways, and innovations, especially for managing the risk posed to the sustainable energy transition for the Caribbean community with a few to fast-tracking the transformation. This event, ladies and gentlemen, provides a clear opportunity for CARICOM and Suriname stakeholders who are interested in supporting sustainable energy development with the region to examine and agree on practical approaches for transition in CARICOM countries to new energy ecosystems that support resilience building. The goal of this conference aimed at aligning public and private initiatives for the generation of electricity through the use of renewable energy sources is therefore timely. The government of Suriname has emphasized the importance of renewable energy on numerous occasions. Besides the upcoming developments regarding the oil and gas sector for the future of Suriname, this event does directly streamlines the government's vision and policy. These three days must provide space and opportunity for leadership and industry innovation. Partnerships are key for project implementation, whether between strategic international and local players for utility scale projects. But also increasingly between the business community and project developers who can provide optimized energy solutions in the growing distributed power market. This will contribute towards building a regional and international network, facilitating interaction, future engagement, and public-private partnership. One thing we should not overlook is that apart from being a post-pandemic situation, there are global financial and development risk, along with increasing impacts such as climate change. Also, looming global instability as a consequence of the political conflict should not be overlooked. Unfortunately, all of this will have an impact on energy generations, demands, flows, and prices. So, we must not only make a transition from one energy source to a cleaner and renewable one, but also consider how energy itself will transform our lives and our economies as we go forward. Adoption and installation of renewable energy sources such as PV solar, wind, hydro, and others will offer significant benefits to our countries. Looking at recent of development in Suriname regarding renewable energy, there are some significant ones that stand out. To name a few, the wind data collection and the development of wind map onshore and nearshore was recently completed and shows opportunities for wind-based energy generation. A feasibility study is done for floating solar in the Afabaka Reservoir. A distributed solar PV microgrid is in development at the Anton de Combe University of Suriname. And earlier this year, a two grid type solar plants in the rural areas in Kiri and Koroni were completed and put into use by the EBS. In several villages in the hinterland of Suriname, mini grids based on hybrid systems and PV, solar, and fuel-based gensets have been operationalized. Importex 
on solar panels has been reduced by 90% to promote the implementation of PV systems. For the hinterland, a rural electrification plan is in development. This plan will consist of sustainable solutions for the villages, such as implementing hybrid systems where primary energy will be generated by a mini solar plant, having a diesel generator as a backup power generator. An ongoing pilot project for electric vehicles and decarbonization of the transport sector are also in development. And while we are transitioning, ladies and gentlemen, our domestic business community must be involved and prepared to benefit from those projects and secure jobs, income, and operational capacity. Therefore, local content is an important aspect and several initiatives have been undertaken to promote this. To optimize utilization of green energy, a strategic framework is required. These frameworks are still in development phase. Ladies and gentlemen, due to climate change, Trinidad and Tobago were confronted with heavy rains causing life-threatening floods only yesterday. Therefore, the time to act for the green energy transition is now. A region together, we can achieve this. I wish you all a fruitful event, and I look forward to the result of this forum and the steps that will be undertaken as part of a joint public-private effort where the Energy Authority of Suriname and the Energy and the Tsunami Energy Chamber can play a central role. I wish you all fruitful discussions and outcome of this meeting. Uh, het is de bedoeling dat wij uh, proberen tot een roadmap te komen. Uh, we opereren in een bepaalde regio, uh, Caribisch gebied. En uh, samen met uh, regionale stakeholders kijken we in hoeverre wij tot een, uh, tot een roadmap kunnen komen. Uh, naar de toekomst toe, waar uh, de wereld zich voorbereidt op, uh, op uh, elektriciteit. Ja, alles is um, uh, elektrik. Ja, en als Suriname, als region, moeten we ook daarop voorbereid zijn. Ja, uh, fossiele brandstoffen worden afgebouwd. Dus uh, hoe gaat Suriname, hoe gaat het Caribisch gebied zich daarop voorbereiden? Daarover praten we vandaag en de komende dagen. Belangrijk is uh, renewables. Dat is, de, dat is de toekomst, omdat uh, uh, fossiele brandstoffen worden afgebouwd. Um, in Suriname is het niet zo dramatisch, uh, gegeven het feit dat we uh, een groot deel van onze nationale energy mix uh, van hydro afkomstig is. Uh, relatief schone energie, ik, ik zeg relatief, omdat we de prijs ervoor ergens in de jaren 60 hebben betaald. Ja, hele grote gebieden hebben we onder water gezet. De prijs hebben we betaald. Gemeenschappen moesten we relokeren, herlokeren. Maar vandaag de dag kunnen we praten over relatief schone energie. Renewables, maar ook dus modern, affordable en sustainable. Dat zijn de pijlers die deze dagen centraal staan. Minister, uh, het is ook in het kader van CARICOM Energy Month. Zeker. En CARICOM neemt ook deel hier aan. Wat zal hun input zijn? Um, kijk, we proberen sowieso te coördineren. Sommige landen in de regio um, die, die hebben progress gemaakt de afgelopen periode. Andere landen hebben nog de ondersteuning nodig. Wij proberen um, de, 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 de kennis, de know-how die er is, um, de ervaring die er is in de regio te bundelen, weet je, ten voordele van, uh, van het gebied als, als geheel. En uh, CARICOM, als, uh, CARICOM als regionale organisatie speelt een belangrijke rol uh, daarin.